Hello my friend, today we will take a look at G7X Mark III, the latest 1-inch sensor compact camera from Canon. I have to admit that I used to ignore 1-inch sensor compact cameras, but there are three specific reasons why I've decided to try out G7X Mark III. The first reason is that it is the first Canon camera with oversampled full sensor 4K video, the second reason is that it is the first compact 1-inch sensor camera with mic input jack, and the third reason is that it has stacked CMOS sensor. In this video we will take a look at the performance and feature set of this little camera, and because this is a vlogging camera I might appear on this side of the lens as well. But first, let's take a look at the size and the build quality. I really started to appreciate small cameras in the past couple of months. The technology is moving forward and it is impressive how much can be packed in such a small package. G7X Mark III easily fits into the pocket and it weighs just 304 grams. The build quality is ok, it feels pretty solid, but it is mostly made of plastics, which is fine, but at this premium price point I can imagine more premium materials. What I really like is the screen attachment and tilting mechanism. That is made of metal and it is super solid. The build quality is pretty good overall. G7X Mark III uses 1 inch typed stacked CMOS sensor, which probably is backside illuminated. Canon doesn't make these sensors, so it seems that it might actually be made by Sony, which is a good thing in my opinion. This sensor has much higher readout speed, which means that it can shoot oversampled full sensor 4K video with no crop. As I mentioned, it is the first Canon camera that can do that. I can't fully evaluate this sensor yet, because the RAWs are not compatible with editing software, but I'm actually very impressed by the JPEGs. 20.2 megapixels is more than enough resolution, and I can say that the stills look better than I expected. There is a lot of details, and I have to say that the colors are great in auto picture style, Sony sensor and Canon color science may be the perfect combination. I can't tell you much about the dynamic range at the moment, but I will do so once the ROS will be supported. These 1 inch sensors have 3x2 aspect ratio, which is what I prefer. 4K video quality is very impressive as well. It is still terribly over sharpened out of the box, but when you turn down the sharpening you will get very detailed 4K video. It is oversampled 5.5K video, so it captures great amount of details. The highlights roll-off is also very nice and it captures a lot of dynamic range, especially in natural and faithful picture styles. Overall, big thumbs up, this is actually the most detailed video that I have seen on Canon cameras so far. There is a bit of a rolling shutter, but it will only be visible at longer focal lengths, it definitely won't ruin your footage and image stabilization helps a lot there. 1080p video is also fine, it is a bit better than what you will get out of DSLRs, but definitely not as impressive as the 4K. The recording limit in 4K is 10 minutes, which is very good for 1-inch sensor compact camera, and in 1080p you can shoot 30 minute clips. It can shoot 4K at 25p in PAL mode, but in NTSC it can only shoot 30p. 24p option is not available. I shoot 25p because I am in Europe, but if you shoot 24p that won't be possible with this camera. Modern editing software can mix 24 and 30p footage with no problems though. It can also shoot 120p slow motion in 1080p, which is a big upgrade over M50, EOS RP or EOS R. The video is slowed down in camera, autofocus and audio recording are not available in this mode, but it is still a nice option to have. The video quality in this mode is reasonably good. The crucial thing about GX7 Mark III will be the video autofocus. It uses contrast-based autofocus, so there is no dual pixel autofocus and no face detection points. Generally, I can say that the autofocus is usable. It is a bit slow, but there is basically no hunting. I definitely prefer slower but more accurate autofocus without hunting. G7X Mark III has great face tracking mode, which detects the face perfectly, and it will lock on the face every time, but it may take a bit of time. I can say that it is good enough for vlogging. As I have said, it doesn't hunt, so even if you get out of focus for a short while, it won't be so distracting. You can also track any subject by tapping on the screen. The autofocus in stills is good, it is more than good enough for intended purposes, even the tracking in servo mode is impressive. 
It can even be pretty solid camera for sports, especially with the possibility to shoot 30 frames per second raw burst. For normal situations such as landscapes or street photography it is more than sufficient. G7X Mark III probably uses the same lens as Mark II. It has 24 to 100 mm full frame equivalent focal range and f1.8 to f2.8 aperture. That is very useful focal range suitable for everything from landscapes and vlogging at the wide end to the portraits on the long end. f1.8 to 2.8 aperture is also relatively wide, so it is reasonably good for low light shooting for this category. You can also blur the background at the long end. This lens is pretty good optically, although the corners seem to be digitally stretched to get those 24mm on the wide end, so the corner sharpness is not great at 24mm. As you zoom in, the sharpness gets better. The contrast is very solid and I quite like the optical character of this lens. In combination with that sensor, it actually shoots very nice pictures. This lens has optical image stabilization. It is actually pretty effective. The footage is very stable, it deals with shaking very well. It is more than sufficient for stabilizing the footage when you are walking with camera pointed at yourself. It also has auto level feature that can help you keep the horizon leveled in video, which is very useful. Overall the image stabilization is very good on this camera, I have no complaints about that. G7X Mark III also has integrated 3 stop ND filter. That is very useful for avoiding using very high shutter speeds in video. Automatic exposure changing is pretty smooth, which is very important for this type of camera, because most of the users will use it with automatic exposure settings. Regarding the handling, it is very small camera, so there is not a lot of physical buttons, but there is still everything that you need. It also has a small grip, so it is a bit easier to hold than other point and shoot cameras. There are two dials. One is the thumb dial and the second one is the ring around the lens. The buttons are well positioned and large enough. There is also exposure compensation dial, which is very useful on this type of camera. A downgrade in comparison with G7X Mark II is that there is no option to de-click the aperture ring around the lens. That was very useful for manual focusing, but I don't think that a lot of users will use manual focusing on cameras such as this one. I also prefer to focus using the touch screen and then just turn off the autofocus servo. A big advantage of this camera are great touch controls. It is a big strength of Canon, especially with these cameras that don't have many buttons. On-screen buttons for continuous autofocus and quick menu are always available and you can also set the exposure on-screen in manual mode, change video exposure mode, start video recording and so on, so that is great. Canon also has very good quick menu, probably the best on the market, it offers all of the settings that you might need to change on the go, everything is very easy to find and access. That is especially useful if you have the screen facing towards you, because you can still change all of the settings, so big thumbs up for that. Main menu is also pretty well organized, everything is easy to find, so I have no complaints there either. The user interface is generally a big strength of this camera. It uses the latest Digigate processor, so the operation is extremely fast, there is basically no lag, not even in the playback menu. Turning the camera on and off is also extremely quick. G7X Mark III uses 3 inch display with about 1 million dots and 3 by 2 aspect ratio. It is very good display, the sharpness is sufficient, it is very bright and the outdoors visibility is not a problem at all. The colors are also very good. The screen can be tilted up of course, which is very useful for vlogging. The tilting mechanism is super solid, so I have no worries about that. Touch sensitivity is also great, it works just like modern smartphone. Having a bit more than 1 million dots would be nice in 2019, but it is still a very good screen, so no complaints there. Regarding the viewfinder, there isn't one. You need to go with G5X Mark II if you want the viewfinder, but to be honest, I don't miss it on cameras such as this one. The sound quality on G7X Mark III is on par with other cameras in this category, so it is usable, but not great to be honest. Fortunately, it is the first 1-inch sensor compact camera with mic input jack, so let's take a look at how does that work. The most convenient way to use external mic with G7X Mark III that I found is to use Rode Wireless Go that I have attached to the screen tilting mechanism. The sound quality with this combination is in my opinion very good, 
So the mic input jack is, in my opinion, a big advantage of G7X Mark III over older 1-inch sensor compact cameras. The battery life is generally a weakness of all cameras in this category. G7X Mark III uses small 1250mAh battery that won't last very long, especially if you shoot 4K video. For full day shooting, I would say that you might need about 3 of these batteries. It is possible to charge the camera through USB-C, which is great, but it only worked when I used USB-C to USB-C charger. It didn't work with my power bank or my raw power charger. I wasn't able to find any information about that, the manual for camera is not available, and Canon side recommended using cable that won't fit, so I will have to further investigate that. The nice thing is that it is possible to use the camera without battery with MacBook Pro charger. The battery life indicator is also terrible. 100% battery has the same recording as 51%. Regarding the overheating issues, yesterday I was taking short 4K clips throughout the day and it was ok until the evening where the high temperature warning appeared and I had to switch to full HD. The camera wasn't warm at all, I've even taken out the battery and that was barely warm, so I think that this could be improved just by raising the threshold in the firmware. G7X Mark III has pretty good connectivity and good app, but it still requires Wi-Fi for transferring images, which is a no-go for me personally, and I will rather use USB-C to USB-C cable and import the pictures directly. Canon has added an option to livestream to YouTube using the Wi-Fi. A few users might use that, this would be great 4 years ago when live streams on YouTube were popular. The smart features and connectivity are still a weakness of every single camera on the market and that also includes G7X Mark III. To sum up, I have to say that I am impressed by G7X Mark III. In my opinion, it is the most competitive Canon camera since the release of 5D Mark III. Those three features that I mentioned in the beginning of this video are indeed what makes it interesting for me personally. It has very good 1-inch type stacked CMOS sensor, beautiful colors, great oversampled 4K video quality and the mic input jack makes it much more versatile for advanced users. The controls, display and the implementation of touchscreen are big advantages of G7X Mark III. The autofocus won't match face detection systems, but it doesn't hunt and even though it is slow, it doesn't look distracting in video. I would say that it is usable overall. The lens is pretty good for this type of camera, the focal range is very versatile and it has decent optical character. A relevant question is also whether it makes sense to get one of these over high-end smartphone camera. The answer is yes, it still destroys any smartphone camera, but I will make a separate video about that. Overall, I can say that I like it a lot, I intend to use it a lot, and I will make more videos featuring this camera soon. So that's it for this video, thank you for watching, I hope that you like this video and that you found it to be useful. Stay tuned for more videos and maybe consider subscribing if you don't want to miss my future content. I appreciate your feedback in form of thumbs up or thumbs down. If you would like to ask anything or share your opinion, please do so in the comment section and see you next time.